Hi, this is Allard with Bitcoin Asset Research, and today I want to talk about why HUT8 is a massively undervalued Bitcoin and AI play. This really comes from an article I pushed out on Seeking Alpha a few days ago. You can see here the stock is up 19% since I first published it. This video is just a summary of this article, and I'll link it in the description below. So HUT is a Canadian Bitcoin miner. It has an ongoing transition to HPC, and I think this is a compelling value opportunity. The massive Bitcoin treasury compared to its market cap is one thing that makes it very attractive. And I think of this as a data center reach trading at a steep discount, and you'll see why later on in this video. So moving on to Bitcoin treasuries, you can see that HUT actually has one of the highest ratios of Bitcoin to its market cap. Over 50% of its market cap is Bitcoin. And that's really high on this list, and it's actually the highest PubCo miner um, on this metric. Now, not all exahash are created equal. This is a slide from Terra Wolf's investor presentation. It really ranks up a few different miners based on gross profit margin. And we can really take that, we can really take this and come up with the ranking. Terra Wolf, Clean Spark, Core Scientific, Mara, and Riot in that order regarding their costs to mine. Terra Wolf obviously has the lowest cost to mine within this graphic. Remember, these are guesstimates. It's all from Terra Wolf's slide. So, you know, take that as you will. They clearly are going to be a little bit biased towards themselves. But later on, we do see a concrete figure of Wolf's cost to mine. You see here, it costs about 41000 dollars in order to mine a single Bitcoin, which means that if Bitcoin is sitting at over 41,000, they are in the green. But if Bitcoin ever falls below this, then the mining operation would be in trouble. Now, HUT-8 also reveals their own cost to mine a single Bitcoin, and it's at $26,000. So we can basically update our previous rankings for cost to mine. Originally, we had this, and we can say that HUT beats all of them because 26,000 obviously beats 41,000 per Bitcoin. So just to summarize from all of this, HUT has the lowest cost to mine. This means it has the highest gross margins. HUT has the lowest market cap to Bitcoin reserves ratio. 56% of the market cap is Bitcoin. It trades at less than 2x its Bitcoin holdings. And this is a steal amongst miners, based solely on those mining metrics alone. Now, mining is a crappy industry. I don't think anyone disputes this. This is one of the most perfectly competitive marketplaces ever. Econ 101 tells you that perfect competition means zero economic profits. You got to think about what happens when the marginal revenue is the same as the marginal cost. Profits obviously go to zero in this case. Pure mining is not a good business to stay in. I wouldn't want to be a shareholder in an operation that is just pure mining. So when you think about mining stocks, you have to think about what else they are doing. Um, what else are they doing with their power assets? What else are they doing with their manpower? Because if they're only mining Bitcoin, then they're not going to be a big, a good business to be in in the long term because again, profits go to zero. Now, if you like this video so far, like, follow, share, comment. I started writing just to hear some challenges to my thoughts. And same for these videos. I really do appreciate constructive critique. So what's better than mining Bitcoin is taking those power assets and devoting it to a business with higher barriers to entry. AI computing is one of these. It's been frequently talked about. Many miners are trying to make this transition and many won't be successful. HUT has always prioritized optionality in their sites. And I think this is very important. You can tell in the earnings call, the CEO calls it their power first thesis. And here's an interesting quote. You can pause the video here and read the full thing. But I want to clue you in on this timely access to multi 100 megawatts worth of long term reliable low cost power in support of this AI transition. And this is one of those things where really just comes down to whether HUT can make this jump into HPC and AI. Now, when in doubt, you want to look for signals from people who did their DD. Here we have Co2, which is a pretty reputable technology investor over the last 10 years. They've announced a $150 million cash injection into HUT back in June of this year in order to build out their AI transition. Now, let's do some napkin maths here. Currently, HUT has at least 762 megawatts of capacity used for mining. This is on their investor presentation. We've heard of the Texas Panhandle, and this is on the earnings call as well. This is a 205 megawatts for HPC. Now we're taking the quote unquote multi hundred megawatts that were talked about in that quote shown earlier, and we're going to add it to this 205 figure and assume this is 400 megawatts energized for HPC to be done by the end of 2025. Now HUD's market cap is $960 million at the time of recording this video. Digital Realty is probably the most well-known data center REIT. Unlike HUT, DLR doesn't even own much of the machines it hosts. Generally, data center REITs have this quality. It owns the power infrastructure and the building around it, but the actual machines are kind of um, split in ownership between the clients who are just hosting them. And normally the data center REIT just serves as this thing that hosts the actual machines. With Bitcoin miners, that actually is not the case. Miners tend to own their ASICs. And in the case of these HPC transitions, they tend to own the NVIDIA GPUs that they're using for HPC. Now, DLR has 2,500 megawatts in place and over 3,000 of buildable capacity. It has a market cap of $50.6 billion. You can probably see where I'm going now because let's call it 5,500 megawatts for $50 billion. This is about $9.2 per watt of capacity, right? So all I did was I divided 50.6 billion by 5,500 million watts and I got $9.2 per watt. And if you do that same math for HUT, it actually comes down to $2.4 per watt. So this is kind of a very big value gap. You have $9 per watt versus $2 per watt. That's a massive value gap right there. HUT is a super cheap data center REIT when you look at it this way. Because um, obviously with data center REITs, you're looking at how much capacity they have because their value add to society is being able to generate computations. And that computation will be necessarily capped at how much energy they're able to commit to any computation. And in the case of 
DLR, you clearly see like over 5,000 megawatts of power is the capacity. And HUT has a much lower capacity, but from a dollars to capacity way of looking at things, um, it is significantly cheaper. You have one at $9 per watt and the other is $2 per watt. Now, I also think that you can't forget more than half of HUT's market cap is Bitcoin. We've already covered this. HUT also has another 700 megawatts for mining, and some of this could probably be converted to HBC. Like we've mentioned in the past, they have prioritized optionality in their power assets, and this is something that we also have to consider. So that 400 megawatt picture might not be, it might be just an underestimate. And they also have $150 million of cash from Code 2, as well as $500 million in BTC dry powder. So that's plenty of like liquidity to make this kind of transition happen. And again, don't forget that Code 2 has already vetted and done the due diligence on this process. Feeling bullish yet? I am. This is a miner that can make AI work. A lot of the miners are talking about this, but again, this is one that probably has a good chance of making it work. We've heard a lot about this transition, and HUT is the one that Go2 trusts. Stock is down a lot since that last ca cash injection in June. I think a lot of people are scared right now because hash price is at record lows. What are the risks here? AI transition might fail. Despite all the due diligence, it could be possible that they're not able to make this transition, and in which case, this whole thesis kind of falls apart. Another risk is that AI might not be so profitable after all, right? So you got to think that what is the buy side of AI compute? And we do hear that there's quite a big buy side. People want to train their own GPTs. People want to train AI generated images and content creation, stuff like that. But th this market can only be so big. So it is possible that it isn't actually profitable after all. And this could be a serious risk to building out these hyperscalers. Now, if BTC falls, then that will pull the stock down. Miners are leveraged Bitcoin by default, because you have to think of a miner as a call option on Bitcoin, where the cost to mine the Bitcoin is the strike price of that call option. So that right there is already a leveraged call, a leveraged Bitcoin position. And then the Bitcoin treasuries on the balance sheet plus debt on the balance sheets constitutes a leveraged Bitcoin capital structure. So it's almost like two avenues of leverage on Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin falls, like this thing is going to fall as well. Hash rates can also explode far faster than expected. Um, this would just mean that there's more competition, which again, causes that perfect competition marketplace to play out as we've talked about earlier. So long term, this is what I expect. It can use the HPC segment to fund energy costs for mining as well. This means that it doesn't really have to sell any of the Bitcoin mined, and it can keep 100% of it. This would allow it to grow its Bitcoin treasury faster than other miners. And then the market's probably going to assign a higher multiple to its Bitcoin NAV. Right now, we are at less than 2x Bitcoin NAV. Again, with 56% of the market cap is Bitcoin, then that means that it is less than 2x. It is trading at 2x the amount of Bitcoin it has. Now, tons of value will be created if this higher multiple is reassigned. BTC per share could grow without dilution. This concludes the video. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.